Oh, we're starting? We're going. We're going. I'm Mark Dean. I'm responsible for the Omelet Research Center, IBM Fellow and Vice President. Wow. Yeah. And we're here in a, a really interesting room. Stuart Parkins Lab. This is uh, Stuart Parkins Lab where he's doing a lot of the spintronics work. Now, what is spintronics? Oh, I, I, God. Yeah, I see you're asking. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like I'm We could have that guy that. come yeah, over here. We got other people that know the details. Let's just say it's the use of the spin of an electron to uh, store information versus the charge of electron to store information. And that lets you pa pack more data into a more little... More data tighter with lower power. That's the key. Uh, and that's, Much lower power. And that's really a... There's a demand for that because of all the data centers around the world oh, that are using geez. a lot of power around Lots the world. Lots of power. Right? They, we're getting to the point where you want to build a power plant next to the data center. Yeah. Right? In fact, we just visited Rackspace, which is building a huge data center in, inside a shopping mall. They bought an old shopping mall. Oh, is that right? Oh, yeah, they're ripping it apart and they're going to put the hundreds, of thousands or hundreds of thousands of servers there. Right? They're talking about big building data centers that will rival the size of silicon foundries. Yeah. You know, so those are big. Yeah. And you start to say, okay, I've got to put these close to a power plant that can actually power it because it's just too huge. Yeah. And that's just the way it is. Data is now the new factory. I mean, they're really data factories. Yeah. Right? Now this thing lets you uh, deposit a layer of atoms one, by, one layer at a at time. At a time, right? that's right. Well, and in fact, you can do that and do all of the testing without exposing it to the outside. So you can do everything in a complete vacuum, which is important. So you can build layers that you could never build out in the open air because they'd be contaminated right at the very beginning. So yeah. yes, it's, it, this is pretty special equipment, yeah, very special, one of a kind, one yeah. of a kind. Well, so let's talk about the research lab, because you, you run the research lab, right? Yeah. yeah. So we're, if San Francisco is here and Silicon Valley's down here, you're like down here. Down yeah, there, just it, at the bottom of but San you're, Jose. But you're like not anywhere that most people go, right? Well, well you don't people see fly IBM. over us all the time. We were debating about putting a sign on the top of the building that says IBM because the, the flight path is right over the top. But tell me about, this is a really historic research lab. Most of the advances in hard disk drives was yeah. done here. Uh, especially head technology, a lot of work in head technology. Yeah. But uh, you know, IBM invented one of the first hard disk drives, and that yeah. was done in San Jose. Yeah. So we carried that uh, forward. And we're going to get a video of that. The get, first hard drive. That's right. It's is out it, there in the hallway. It's huge. It's a monster. You've got ready to crank it up. You know, it looks now, like it should be hand cranked or something. Now, so. how much data fit on that first hard oh, drive? I think it was was it 2,000 bits or bytes? I mean, it was like in that. Not 2,000 gigs. Not, oh, no. Oh, not not 2,000 megs. No, not 2,000 megs. 2,000 bits. <laughs> <laughs> so, but that was important. This it's like this. That's right. Right. And we used to make those disks in the lab out in the open. They weren't in a clean room. Wow. They actually used to pour the coating out of a styrofoam cup while it was spinning to, sp <laughs> to spin the layer on. So it's a really, you know. But it worked, you know, it worked. It's amazing what you could do. Wow. Yeah, scientists are great. Did, did they have, when they were inventing that, did they have any clue, you know, 20 years from now, no. How, oh, no. how far that no industry clue. would go? And a lot of breakthroughs made it happen. Yeah. So they had no clue. But they know they needed it at the time because they were creating data that they wanted to store. So yeah. had to do something. And core memory just wasn't good enough, right? No. So that was the predecessor. We needed something that was storing that. What's not good enough today? <laughs> What's not good enough? You know, what are, if if I was to troll around the uh, research lab, oh. what's the what's the key driver behind this lab? What what are oh. the researchers going? Man, this is just so not good much. enough. So much. Oh, uh, I don't. I can't. Well, this cover machine it all. is one. This right? machine is one, which is where we're using spin of electrons, 
uh, to store information, so that's one. Uh, one that's close by is the use of DNA to do self-assembly of things like carbon nanotubes. So you can think of uh, DNA molecules that are attracted to certain carbon nanotubes, put them together, it sorts them, can even straighten them out, and then lay them down automatically on a substrate. So Now what's yeah. that going to be used for? Well, just think of memories that will be 10 times the density that you're getting today. Wow. Think of an iPod Nano that has a terabyte of information on it. I mean, you, know, you might say, well, what am I going to do with that? I'm sure we'll, we'll find figure out. We'll figure out. <laughs> Every video you'd ever want to be stored on it. But, I, uh, I did a video yesterday. My son was given an Apple Newton, oh, okay. which is only, <laughs> it's only, what, nine years old yeah, or something like that? Right. But it, it only had six, or it had only a few megs on its memory card. Oh, man. And the, uh, we compared it to his new iPhone, which has eight gigs, eight right? Eight gigs, I know. So in 10 more years, we're going to be we're terabytes. Gonna, we're going to be terabytes of that. So, wow. so we're working on that here. Uh, we've got uh, another technology called storage class memory that actually uses phase change to store the information. So that's near in. You'll start to see that happening more near in. So it won't be a terabyte on a iPod Nano, but let's say hundreds of gigabytes on the iPod Nano. Yeah. So we'll get there. Now my show is for Fast Company magazine, and I'm all about finding business innovation or technology okay. innovation. What makes a good innovator? What, who are the kinds of people you're trying to hire here? Uh, you know. People with good imagination, somebody that thinks outside of the box, so has very few constraints, thinks outside the box. Uh, those are the people you want. Somebody that's proven that they uh, are willing to take some risk, you know, so we like risk takers. Yeah. And people that compare well to their peers in the science, in the sciences. So you have to you know, show that you know the science, you know how nature works. Now let's explore how you apply nature, that knowledge of how nature works. Wow. And, and so. Well, it's a cross-section. We need, this is a great lab because we have people from physicists and chemists and uh, material scientists to computer scientists and the regular engineering fields to ethnographers. We actually have three people that are anthropologists that study how businesses work. Yeah. So business process, business process modeling, all important to our business. Uh, and that's a new part of the lab, right? That's a new right? part. That's our services research team. Now, tell me how you do Services is research. research. What is that? Yeah, I know. That's really studying how an organization works together. That's right. You study how an organization works, how businesses operate, how you leverage IT to support business process. What's the newest trend that you're seeing in, in that research? Uh, I would say the biggest trend is uh, information analysis. How do you take what a company knows about itself and find new business models out of that, yeah. or new opportunities out of that. That's the biggest trend, yeah. huge opportunity. People are sitting on gold mines they don't even know about, yeah. right? I mean, these business models will be key to people growing their businesses, yeah. and we try to help them with that. And that's now, how do you help business leaders see that data, or act on that data, right? Because I, I, risk, I, right? I told Bill Gates to buy a lot of things, and he goes, he, did, uh, yeah, he didn't, yeah, right? Yeah. Because it was too small. The key is, um, well, this is maybe the great thing. Uh, most of the great breakthroughs happen through small businesses happening by accident. Yeah. Google. Yeah. Who would have thought? Advertising off of a search. You know. Who would have thought? Yeah. Uh, Gates, when he started, right? We picked him up, put, made it part of the PC. You know, big deal. Yeah. Who would have thought? We, yep. would, we didn't think about Gary it. Gary Kildall didn't no, think. Who would, I have, who would have thought of putting people's uh, faces and on, a, on the web would have value, right? I thought that, that was just a toy. So a lot of this stuff happens without being recognized ahead of time, but it happens through the natural movement of things. If you knew it ahead, you probably know too much and you're late. Yeah. Right. So the key is... And none of that stuff could have happened without the oh, research that was done right, right here in this building. That's right. A lot of things that are happening because of the basics that we put in place to make them happen. Yeah. So. Do you think IBM doesn't get enough credit because of that? Because oh, it's a big get, company? And get, it's good for our brand. We get plenty of credit. We're not worried about that. People, our peers, people in the area, in the sciences, academia, and people in the business, they know. They know what we do. They know what everybody else does. And we all benefit. There's a lot of opportunity. That's a great thing. Uh, what, what gets you up in the morning? Oh, well. You know, which, which uh, research here do you think is the most oh, exciting? Oh, now see, you're not going to, no, I'm not going to pick <laughs> one. You're not going to get me to pick one. They will be after me for the rest of the time. I, 
I'm fortunate to have a, I like being able to walk into the lab and find an expert in just about any field of science or engineering. And we can have a conversation about stuff that most people would just roll their eyes and say, oh, you know. But these guys will sit down and say, oh, yeah, that's possible. Let's see if we can do something with that. And that's the cool thing. And we can call other people outside of IBM, say, hey, you want to join the conversation? They'll say, oh, okay, if you're talking about it, yeah, we'll, we'll want to come and talk about it. Yeah. And that makes it fun. You don't, I'm real honored to be here because you don't give me public tours. There's gates and you know, it's, it, it's hard to find. You're welcome it's like anytime. You, no, well, it's now hard you to know find we're it. up here. We know where to find yeah, you now. Right, you know, right. it, it took anytime. a long drive up here. but uh, um, If you were giving in public tours, what, what would you show them? What are five things that you five would probably Five things, do? wow. Just Because we'll try to get that Just five, wow. Well, the last thing we would do is to let them walk the, the area and look at the wildlife and the outside. I mean, it's just a beautiful place. We would, um, I'd take them into my Blue Gene lab. We have a Blue Gene and cloud computing lab that's actually on this floor just around the corner. Uh, that's where we're doing a lot of information analytics work, so I'd show them that. I'd take them to our user group lab where we can show them some of the breakthroughs that we've had for how to use uh, handheld devices or other types of devices and interfaces. Uh, we've got lots of labs like this for material science, and so depending on what they were really interested in, I'd take them maybe into one, another one of those, so yeah. I can show them where we're moving an atom. Everybody wants to move an atom, so. I do. Yeah, okay, so we, we do have take the power them, to move yeah, an atom? Yeah, we take them into our atom moving lab, and we've got two um, electron microscopes that allow you to move atoms wow. around. So we, is we that do crazy? That. That's crazy. That, you know, you know to be able to move something that small. And place them and spell something. I mean, not just to move them, but move several and actually organize them the way you want. Wow. Yeah, it's, that's pretty neat. So those are more visual kind of uh, labs. Yeah. And, and then we've got I, we've got a lot of work in our storage systems area. So I'd probably take them and show them where you know the most advanced file system is in the world, the most scalable file system. We have a big area there, and that's kind of a big deal for us. It's less visual, but it's, uh, it's good research. So. Very cool. Yeah. Well, thanks for giving me a little tour. And uh, thank you. Anytime. Yeah. Thank you.